way of using crystals to grind and get the energy from the video games. I will take these crystals and I will forge them together and produce huge amounts of energy. So let's try and then we will have energy. My safety goggles. I need my safety gloves. Yeah, I go. Ah, oh, safety fast. That is why I am in my amazing lab. Now, with care and expertise, we will create the energy from the video games. Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Hammer. This week I'm going to be breaking a rule that we've got here on Game Hammer. Normally the rule is that I won't review anything that's newer than the generation of the PS2, the GameCube and the original Xbox because I think once you've got to that point it's pretty much the end point for where you can really be a game developer because I develop some small games and I'm actually working on a game at the moment and also be a reviewer of games the way that we do here. I'm one of those people who thinks that there really should be a divide between the developers and the reviewers, so I don't like to get too close to things. However, I'm going to make an exception this week because we've got a game that is a new game, but it's on the retro 8-bit system, so it kind of counts as an old game. And that game is Betiled, a clone of Bejeweled for the old 8-bits. And we've got three versions of it to look at, but before I get into those, what I want to do first is show you a version of Bejeweled. It's Bejeweled 2 Deluxe on the iMac. It came out a few years ago, so it's not a modern game. So we're not too close to the absolute rule. I will not uh, deal with things that are really modern because I think it's too close to what I'm doing. And we're going to have a look at that to give you anyone who has never seen Bejeweled. And if you haven't, my goodness, go and have a try because it's great but to give you an idea of what is being copied for these other games. So let's have a quick look at uh, Bejeweled 2 on the Apple iMac. Okay, here we go, classic mode widget. It's basically just colour matching, move the mouse around and uh, pick the ones that you want to move on the screen by dragging them. And if you can make a line, which is what you have to do, then they disappear. It's an incredibly simple game. But it's an awful lot of fun. And it's very loud as well, so let's turn that down. I don't know whether you've been able to hear me or not because it's so loud. But yeah, you just drag around, match the colours and try and uh, try and score as many points as you can, basically. It's a very, very simple game. There's various power-ups, like the power gem there and things like that, which uh, allow you to clear more crystals. But that is the be-all and end-all of the game. You move around, you clear crystals, and that's it. It's remarkably simple, but uh, because it's so simple, you pick it up quickly, and it's really good fun to play. It has a load of uh, special effects when you complete levels, things like that. I've always liked this game. It's one of those that it's just nice and easy and simple to play. So I've always liked it. It's a lot of good fun. And it's interesting that it's uh, been ported now by a few uh, homebrew people to uh, various 8-bit systems. So we're going to have a look at that in a moment. But for the moment, let's just see how far we get with the PC version. Well, I'll say the PC version. The Mac version is what we're actually playing here. Yes, it's one of those games you can play on a Mac. People say they're rare, but they're not. I'm a Mac gamer, and uh, there are games, and they're good fun games as well. Oh, I should have got four then. Never mind. Sometimes finding the right moves is a bit tricky, but sometimes it's not. Just like this. It's, there's, like I said, there's really nothing to this game, and that's part of its appeal. It's like Tetris in that, in that manner. There's not an awful lot to do. 
But because there's not an awful lot to do, you get to concentrate on the simplicity and the fun part of the game and make it just really good to play. So I like it. And a lot of people, like you would say, were casuals, perhaps. And that game term gets thrown around as if it's a pejorative one. It's not, but people who just aren't really into games like it's their life, they like it too. So there's an awful lot of people who enjoy something like this. Big, bold colours, nice music, simple gameplay. What more could you want from a, a game that you can pick up and enjoy for a while and then put down? You can't. There's nothing else that you'd want, is there? It's a very simple, very fun, very addictive game. Now, the one thing I will remark on with this version is that you can click and drag with the mouse, click and drag the colours, or you can click on one colour and click on another. That's something to bear in mind when we look at the 8-bit versions, because they change up that base mechanic. And does it change the flow of the game? Not really, but it is a difference to the mechanic. Okay, so there we have it. it. It's a fun, addictive game. It's very simple. The gameplay is incredibly simple. And that is really what allows it to be drilled down to its core and made so compelling to play. Anyone can play this game. Anyone can pick it up and enjoy it. And that's part of its beauty. So let's see how well this really simple gameplay has translated to the older 8-bit systems. We're going to start with the ZX Spectrum version, which... In my opinion, although it may probably isn't the development version, it may actually be one of the best versions. So let's have a look at it right now. Okay, here we are, the Bejeweled clone for the ZX Spectrum. It's a bit tiled. Press fire to start. Let's see how different it is. After years of research, the mad scientist Dr. Circulus has found out the way of getting energy from the essential crystals of the video games. Help him... Help him joining the crystals before time runs out, or beware of a devastating blast. Let's go. Okay, so we've got some background information on what's going on in this game now. That's interesting and different from the act from the original game. Okay, let's see what the controls are. Oh, excellent. OPQA, and uh, that's right. Yeah, like I said, on the uh, Mac version. This isn't a click and click, it's click and drag, and that's the only way of moving these. So click and then click on the direction that you want to go in, and it moves them around. But it's basically the same gameplay, only now we have a time limit as well, which is interesting. I suppose actually on the original versions there's a time limit as well. If you run out of energy it ends, but that doesn't come up much because it's so easy to just find the next thing rather than run out of energy. But this one brings in a much uh, quicker drop down of the time limit. So that's cool, I suppose. Adds a little bit of extra tension to the game. Which may or may not be worth, uh, worth it for you. There we are. We got to the end of the level. And are rewarded with more crystals. I like the funny faces on these ones. It gives a bit of extra character to it rather than just the impersonal blocks and uh, colours from the originals. Not blocks, you know, crystals. But it is different. So yeah, it it's very much the same game. It's just lower resolution, basically. But it's good fun. There's no sound on this one apart from the sound effects, so we've got no music going on. We've got no tunes. But there is nothing wrong with this. I cannot fault this game. This is good playing good old fun. So I can see why I got an award when it went to a, a game show. Because there's a lot here to enjoy. This is good good old fun. But like I said before, there's not an awful lot you can say about this really because what can you say? You match the colours and that's it. When you match some colours they disappear. Very simple gameplay. Very classic gameplay as well. If you remember back to the old days where games were an awful lot simpler. They had a simple premise and you played them and you enjoyed them and that was it. So I like this because it's proper classic gaming. And we don't see a huge amount of that these days. But this 
is just good. It's a very, very smooth implementation. Everything works. It just works. It, the colours are good. The layout, it's pretty good. I mean, most of the screen you're not actually paying much attention to. So it doesn't matter that the design is a bit scruffy. But to be honest with you, like I said on that review of Nomad, I actually like the scruffy punk design. It works quite well for what it is. The game moves fast. It's smooth. It's fun. There's absolutely no problems with this whatsoever. This is good stuff. Okay, the Spectrum version, as you can see, is basically bejeweled, drilled right down to its core, and done in a unique way for an 8-bit system. It's got a lot of character, it's got a lot of real niceness to it, but it does have this problem of it being small part of the screen with this other bit that you just don't seem to use. There's not a lot of screen real estate being used to its full potential here. It's very much as if the spectrum couldn't be used to its full potential because so much was going on, but it's all not, really not going on that much. But nevertheless, despite the flaws and potential flaws that there is a lot here that is really, really good. And I really like how well they've managed to translate Bejeweled to the Spectrum. I was very impressed. Let's have another look at another system and see. I think this one is the development version, the Amstrad CPC version, because it, it just seems that I have that little bit of extra screen polish to it. I may be wrong, but it really does feel like that to me. So let's have a look at it and you can make your mind up for yourself. Okay, here we are on the CPC running Betiled. Nice use of colour. That's looking pretty damn good, actually. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Interesting loading screen there. I think it's going to be the same plotline as the Spectrum version. Nice implementation of the music. That's good. Oh, we've got a nice little uh, menu screen as well there. Let's start and see how we go. After years of research, the mad scientist Docius Circulus has found out the way of getting energy from the essential crystals of video games. Help him joining them before time runs out, or beware of a devastating blast. Let's go! Nicer graphic there, actually. The Doctor looks a bit more... well, you can see what's going on a bit more. It's still low res, of course, 8-bit, but uh, interesting music. Okay, the... Uh, yeah, the, it's nice, it's different, um, I think the Spectrum one actually has better characterization for the crystals, but this is nice, it, is it quite as smooth, it doesn't flow quite as quickly on the CPC, and the resolution is odd, I th think seem a little bit vertically stretched, and maybe that's just me, but I don't know, it, it's just, maybe it's just because um, I've been looking at the Spectrum version and I enjoyed that one, but, uh, hmm. I can't fault it, though. This is good stuff. Uh, you move around very nicely. It's smooth, we're moving. And it's nice to have some music. It's actually a pretty good tune as well, now I think about it. Yeah, I can see this being a catchy tune. Are the levels sm shorter and easier, or was I just getting better uh, use of points? I don't know. Okay, there's a move. Sometimes it gets a bit tricky to find moves. But that's true of the original version as well, so can't fault that. Oh, that was good. Let's see if we'll get a five. Oh, we don't have any of the power-ups that come if you get a five. You did on the original, so it's got the classic... Uh, Mm, but most of the classic gameplay, but none of the power-ups from what I can see. Oh well, that's not a problem. Yeah, the levels are quicker. Yeah, the, the, the levels have got to be quicker. That went over quicker than the Spectrum version did. But, wow. I like the... Actually, I like the colours and the, the way they've drawn these people. It's, it's not bad characterization. It's just a little different from the Spectrum version. And I kind of liked how punky and fun they were. But this works as well as a lot of character to these little spheres. And better use of the screen real estate as well. I have to say that. There's less of the uh, background hood and things like that. It's more gameplay. The gameplay is more in your face, which I like. This is really good, actually. Yeah, this is good. I'm enjoying this one a lot. Let's see if we can pass this level. 
I'm I'm that I had a bit of trouble finding a, a move there. I like the look of the red ones, they're cool. And the white one with his uh, funny grin and uh, specs, that's fun. Yeah, this is good. I am, I'm enjoying this. Oh, there we go. Right, let's stop there because I think we've seen what we need to see with this. It's it's good. There's a lot of good fun here. There's got less time on the, the levels as well. If you look at the timer going down the top, we had just over 60 seconds on the spectrum. And it's just about 40 seconds on the CPC. So, yeah, the levels are shorter, but never mind. It doesn't really matter because you still have a lot of good fun. This is a very good implementation of the game and I'm enjoying it. Now the Amstrad CPC version, as you can see, makes better use of screen real estate. There's a lot of character to the Spectrum version. It's got a kind of punk aesthetic that I really, really love. I said this back on the review of Nomad. I still think it's true. There's a certain punk aesthetic to the way the Spectrum handles graphics, which causes people to do these chunky and a little bit messy sometimes versions which look so good to me and I really love it. The Amstrad version has more of a comic feel to it which is great. It works really well for this game but sometimes it doesn't quite translate in terms of other things. But anyway I think this was a very very polished uh, effort and I really love it. But I want to look at one final one. It's not one that comes up an awful lot on Game Hammer mostly because I have trouble getting an MSX to run on my system because at the moment we still haven't used the emulators. I have found the little device that allows me to plug on my old computers and consoles. You may have noticed there's a GameCube behind me and I've got a lot of other consoles here as well. But what I've found is that the older computers don't always translate into this thing. So I'm still working out the bugs. We're going to get there. We'll see how it goes. I mean, the Amstrad, I can't... All I get is a black and white screen when it comes up, which is annoying. But I'll work it out and then we'll get back to the actual hardware and then the show will be exactly what I actually wanted from the show. But I'm waffling now, so let's just cut straight to it. We're going to have a look at the MSX. It's the final version of Battile that I want to have a look at today because I think it's actually the final version of Battile that's available. And we're going to see just how well this has translated. Okay, here we are on the MSX version. Okay, it's got a uh, very similar uh, quality of sound to the Amstrad. No problem with that. Let's try and turn it up a little bit. There we go. And start. Spectrum style layout, but uh, better use of uh, the screen now so that we have uh, no hyphens in it. The Spectrum version hyphenated some of the words. A better colour layout as well. That's a good use of colour, so let's get in there and see what it's like. This is coming off a cartridge for the MSX, so it should be better than a standard specy port. It's a little bit slower, but let's see how it moves. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's a little bit slower for moving the cursor around, but once it gets going, <laughs> it's really good. Whoa, CPC level of um, level length there, so... We'll bear that in mind. But my goodness, it's quick. Once you start moving things around, it's so fluid. This is nice. This is really nice. The characterization of the the little guys, the little uh, crystals, is uh, basically the Spectrum version, which I suppose is to be expected, given that the MSX and Spectrum have similar graphical capabilities. But look at that hood. That is much better than the Spectrum's messy design. It looks quite nice. So, this is a really impressive port. If I didn't know that from, if I didn't know from the menu screen that uh, this was a port, I would think this was the development version. This is very, very nice and very polished. I am sincerely impressed. Again, the gameplay is the standard. Uh, match the colours to clear lines thing. It's basic bejeweled and there's nothing wrong with that. It works perfectly fine. Movement is with the cursor keys this time instead of OPQA but that's not a problem. It does mean I have to hold my hands in a different place compared to the others but I suppose that would make it uh, a little bit uncomfortable for long play but for what we're going to be doing this is this is good. I really like this. I am actually impressed. Where's it? No, we can't do. Where is it? Another move. I'm 
having trouble here. Where's the, where's the moves? Oh, I've got lost. I've got myself lost now. I'm sure some people are shouting at the screen now. It's over there, you silly woman. But I can't see any moves. I can't. I really can't. Oh, there's one. My goodness. Typical of Bejeweled. You, once you see it, it's obvious. But when you don't see it, it's infuriating. There's got to be a move. And as with all the other ones, the control system is select the one you want to move and then click the direction that you want to move it in. And that's all there is to it. But look at the quality of this screen. I mean, this is fantastic. This looks brilliant. I am loving this. I cannot fault this in any way. This is wonderful. No sound, though. Like the Spectrum, no sound. In fact, the CPC and the, the Mac versions are the ones that have had sound. So that's interesting. But... Uh, it would have been nice if we'd had sound, but it doesn't detract from the game to not have it. I mean, I only just noticed that it wasn't any. So, yeah, all in all, this is a very, very high quality port, and I am sincerely impressed. Okay, I think we can all agree that the MX version there is impressive. It's incredible how polished this game is. When I remember that when I was a kid, the thing that I used to see on the MSX the most was a game called Streaker, and we're going to review that at some point. And it looked like a Spectrum game, but it ran rather slowly. And that, to me, it's always been stuck in my mind what the MSX is. It's always looked like the cheaper Spectrum, even though it was actually a more expensive system. It felt cheaper. But to see it actually running with, plus this is a cartridge game, so it has a, a lot of advantages over other games, it's running the MSX to its full potential, and it is amazing to see. So I was incredibly impressed by this one. It is a brilliant effort. I think out of the three, perhaps the MSX version is the one that I would recommend to people because it has the punky style of uh, graphics from the Spectrum version, but it has the density of colour and the presentation of the CPC version. So... I think it is actually the best of both worlds. So if you're going to look at a version of the talent, I would go for the MSX port because it is so well done. But anyway, that is Betild. It's a very impressive game. It's taken the core gameplay elements from Bejeweled, uh, the talent matching, the level system and the time limit and things like that. And it's made a very impressive version for 8-bit systems. I was really, really pleased to have found this game. No wonder it won an award when it went to a game contest. So I was really, really impressed and I recommend you take a look at it. I'll put a link in the description bar so you can have a look. Anyway, that's really all we've got time for this week. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like this. And if you did, remember to click the like button. Share it with your friends so that they can see a good old game too. And do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching The Game Hammer. And I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.